Hello everyone. Today we're going to cover the next three skills in negative numbers, multiplication, and division. Starting with one-step equations with negatives, multiplying, and dividing. Then we're going to move into multiplying and dividing negative number word problems. And lastly, we'll talk about negative signs in fractions. So let's go back to one-step equations with negatives, multiplication, and division. Now we've already done one-step equations with addition and subtraction, and it's basically the same concept. In order to solve for your variable, you always want to do the inverse, um, the inverse operation. So therefore, if these are going to be problems with multiplication and division, you're obviously going to be doing the opposite of one of those. So let's take a look at the first problem here. I've got 20 equals x over negative 5. So I'm trying to figure out what x is. And since this is a division problem, then the inverse would be to multiply. So watch what I do here. I'm going to multiply this side by negative 5 because now I have my negatives on a diagonal. And we know that when you have the same number on a diagonal, they cancel each other out, getting my variable by itself. And whatever we do on one side, we always want to do to the other. So that's going to leave me with my answer of x equals and negative 5 times 20 is going to be negative 100. Let's try another one. Okay, so we've got negative 6z equals 72. So here I have a coefficient of negative 6, and we know that a coefficient means that there's multiplication happening. So in order to get rid of my negative 6, I have to do the opposite, which is division. And whatever we do on one side, we do to the other. So that's going to leave me with 72 divided by negative 6. 6 goes into 72 12 times. And I've got a positive divided by a negative, leaving me with a negative answer. So z would equal negative 12. Okay, here we've got negative 18 equals 3t. My coefficient is 3. It's multiplication, so in order to get rid of it, we are dividing. And what we do to one side, we do to the other. So that's going to leave me with an answer of negative 18 divided by 3 is negative 6. So t equals negative 6. Now, notice here that I have a fraction as a coefficient. Let me just slide this up. So basically, whenever you have a fraction as a coefficient, you want to multiply through by the reciprocal. Now, we should know what that word reciprocal means. It's simply just the flipped fraction. It's the opposite, so, or sorry, it's just the fraction flipped. So watch what I do here. So I need to get rid of this negative 5 6. So in order to do that, I'm going to multiply through by a negative 6 fifths. Now look what happens on my diagonals. I have the same numbers, so they're going to cancel out. I have a negative times a negative, which gives me a positive variable. You always need to have a positive variable. And then whatever we do on one side, we have to do to the other. So I'm going to multiply the other side of my equation by the reciprocal, which is negative 6 fifths. Next, you want to check to see if you can cross simplify. Okay, I see on my diagonal here, I have a 5 and a 10. Those are both divisible by 5, so that's going to become a 1, and that becomes a 2. And then on my other diagonal, I have a 3 and a 6. Those are both divisible by 3. So that's going to give me a 1, and then again a 2. We have a negative times a negative, which gives us a positive answer. And then we're left with 2 times 2, which is 4, and 1 times 1, which is 1, and 4 over 1 is equivalent to 4. Okay, here we have a decimal problem. I have negative 21 equals 0.07z. This is multiplication with the variable, so in order to get rid of it, we're going to divide both sides by 0.07. I know my answer is a negative because I have a negative divided by a positive, so I'm going to put my negative sign there so I don't forget. And then we have to do decimal division. So hopefully we all remember from fifth grade that you cannot divide with decimals, so you have to scoop your decimal to the right to make your divisor a whole number. So I'm going to scoop it two places to the right, turning that into a 7. And whatever we do on the outside, we have to do on the inside. So i got to scoop over two places, and then those get filled in with zeros. So really now we're dividing 2,100 by 7, 
and that's going to give me a final answer of negative 300. You can always go back and check it on your calculator if you go on your calculator and multiply 0 0.07 times 300 that's going to give you 21 and a positive times a negative gives you a negative 21. Okay, moving along, we're going to do some of the negative numbers word problems with multiplication and division. So let's read the first one. It says, yesterday's low temperature was negative 2.5 degrees Celsius. Today's low temperature is five times as low as yesterday's low temperature. What was the low temperature today? Well, it's telling you that it's five times as low as yesterday's, and yesterday's was negative 2.5. So five times means we are multiplying. So we've got negative 2.5 times 5. And on your calculators, if you multiply negative 2.5 times 5, you're going to get an answer of negative 12.5 degrees Celsius. Okay, if you want to do the quick decimal division, you can do that 2.5 times 5. I know my answer is a negative. 5 times 5 is 25. Carry the 2. 5 times 2 is 10 plus 2 is 12 and we've got one decimal to the right so we scoop one place in. Okay, Grandma Millie is shrinking. Her height decreases by a quarter of a centimeter each year. What is her total change in height over three years? So let's underline what's important. Her height decreases, which means it's getting smaller, by a quarter of a centimeter each year. So if it's decreasing, that means we have a negative one four. And then we wanna know what her total change in height is over three years. So we're gonna do negative one fourth times three years. And that's going to leave us with negative three four centimeters. And you can either write it as a fraction or you can write it as a decimal, which our decimal for negative three fourths is negative 0.75. Okay, let's try another word problem. A town uses positive numbers to track increases in population and negative numbers to track decreases in population. The population has decreased by 300 residents over the past five years. The same number of residents left each year. What was the change in the town's population each year? Well, first you have to determine, am I multiplying or am I dividing here? Well, think about it, if it's decreasing, which operation makes your numbers typically smaller? That would be division. So it's decreasing by 300 residents. That means negative 300. And it's over the course of five years. So to find out how much per year, we're simply just dividing negative 300 by the five years. And that gives us negative 60 residents per year. Okay, moving on to the last skill, negative signs in fractions. So this one kind of ties back into remembering that little trick I taught you in the last lesson about how an odd number of negatives means your answer is going to be a negative, and an even number means it's going to be a positive. So it says, which of the following expressions are equivalent to negative 9 over 6? Well, I can see that I have one negative here, so that means my answer should be a negative. And now look at your answer choices. As you can see, in one of them, they converted it to a mixed number. So it might be helpful to convert it to a mixed number as well. I do see answer choice B has two negatives, so it obviously can't be B because that would be a positive, and we already know that our answer should be a negative. So 6 goes into 9 one time with 3 left over, and that's going to leave me with a negative 1 and 1 half when I reduce my fraction three over six. So the correct answer here would be A. Which of the following expressions are equivalent to negative, negative eight over negative four? So I've got three negatives, which means my answer is a negative. And we know that eight divided by four equals two. So we're looking for something that's gonna give us negative two. Here I've got two negatives, which means my answer is a positive, so that does not work. Answer choice B is also a positive, so that doesn't work. So the correct answer here would be C, none of the above. Okay, let's try a couple more of these. Which of the following expressions are equivalent to negative G over H? One negative means my answer is a negative. Here I've got three negatives, which means it's going to be a negative, so A works. 
B, I have two negatives, which makes it a positive, so that cannot be the correct answer. And obviously, it's none of the above. And the last one, which of the following expressions are equivalent to C over D? Well, C over D is a positive. Here I have two negatives, which makes it a positive. And here I have two negatives, which makes it a positive. So both A and B would be correct answers here. And notice that all these said choose all that apply. So just make sure that you're going through each answer choice because there could be more than one correct answer. Okay, that does it for these three skills. The correlating note-taking packet pages are four through nine, top of the page of nine. And again, you also have the videos in Khan Academy if you would like to see some additional examples. Please feel free to email us with any questions that you have. Have a great day, everyone.